Good afternoon. Welcome to Cannabis Live. Um, my name is Barton Morris. This is uh, Jennifer Domain. We are recording from our uh, Royal Oak office. Uh, if you're looking for information uh, about the marijuana industry in Michigan, then you have come to the right place because we are the Cannabis Law experts. So thank you for tuning in with us today. This is episode 81 and we will be talking about the new micro business license that's uh, available under the adult use law. So we're really looking forward to just kind of covering the overview of the license, who should be considering applying, what that process might look like. And uh, if you should have any questions, feel free to just comment and we'll try to get back to you on those questions. If you need to you know, step out of the room or you can't quite catch the full uh, broadcast live, just remember it is available on our website as well as on YouTube. Well, we should uh, remind everybody that uh, the micro business license has not been, uh, the, the regulations have not been authorized yet, right? So a lot of the things that we're going to be talking about today are uh, what we believe are going to happen, what we know from the, regu from the mar medical marijuana system, uh, what we can extrapolate to uh, know what that, what's likely to happen with respect to getting medical, excuse me, micro business licensing. Uh, so, so don't take it uh, for 100% certain. We are not the ones that authorize these rules. They haven't been done yet, but we have a pretty good understanding of what we think is going to happen. And so we believe that we're able to give you some helpful information. Absolutely. So just to kind of kick us off, the micro business license is a new license type and it basically allows for a business entity to cultivate up to 150 plants and process those plants into various marijuana products. And it also allows you to sell them directly to the public. So this is like a vertical integration style business model. And so basically you have a license that will allow you to have the best of the three license types, the main like consumer commercial license types, uh, but on a much smaller scale. So this is really kind of going to be a great option for our caregivers, uh, for people who are looking for more of a, a small business model to really get your feet into the industry. Uh, and we're really, really uh, excited about seeing how this moves forward with the industry and shaping the industry, keeping it uh, true to the small roots. This uh, license type is integral to uh, the industry. The drafters of the uh, Michigan Regu uh, Marijuana Regulation and Taxation of Marijuana Act uh, wanted to ensure that there was a place for in our industry for small business. And this is precisely the manner in which that we're going to ensure that small business is able to stay uh, within our industry. Uh, because uh, this is designed for those that don't necessarily have the resources uh, to be able to get one of these other license types. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, we do a lot of uh, business in this industry right now in the medical uh, licensing field so far. And there's a lot of people, a lot of big companies that are coming in from all over the country uh, that have been successful, that definitely have millions of dollars. They have uh, opportunities that a lot of small businesses don't have. And so without this micro business license, uh, I can certainly tell you that uh, it's going to be difficult for small businesses to, to remain in this market. But with this micro business license, uh, it's going to be the exact opposite. I feel very confident that there is going to be a place for small business. Uh, you know, and there's different you know, classes of small business, right? There's like very small, there's medium small, there's different degrees, right? So uh, this small micro business license is definitely going to preserve an opportunity for those that simply just want to be in the market uh, to be able to do some really special things that we're going to talk about today. And I think one of the key things about the micro business is really reminding yourself that you're not trying to be a full-blown provisioning center. You can only sell what you grow and what you're able to process. So you can't bring in outside products. So remember that you're not a provisioning center. You are your own brand. You need to think about what this brand is going to look like. Make it an experience for people. Carve out your own little niche market. Make it a craft experience. And when you have a structure like that and you have a game plan like that, that's when you're going to get repeat business. That's when you're going to get tourists to come visit. And that's how you're really going to thrive in this market as a micro business, I think. We talked about this earlier uh, before recording, and one of the things that I think is absolutely fascinating uh, for this particular license type is the ability for 
uh, a micro business license type. I think probably it's very similar to a, a micro brewery. They get to brew their own beer. They get to have a special product that nobody else is allowed to have. Uh, and that to me is really like opens the door for a lot of opportunities for, for small businesses to be able to create products that are exclusive to themselves that nobody else can have. Uh, especially if those products are, are good, if they're really good, if they're unique, if they're, uh, if they're something that people may even want to drive from far away to get. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that that is something that we're definitely going to see because I think everybody will agree that the products and the, and the, and the things that are available as far as cannabis products right now, we're just beginning to scratch the surface. Uh, the, the research that, that people are doing, the innovation uh, that, people, that I'm seeing, that we're all seeing, uh, really is is getting to be uh, just un un unthinkable things are happening and that's going to continue to happen uh, over over many 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 years to come there's going to be a long uh, maturation process for the industry here and micro businesses and those that are operating them have a really great opportunity to uh, just become uh, innovators and, and, and be creative and be able to help develop the market just like the large operators absolutely I think that um Comparing it to a micro business is actually or a microbrewery is actually a really smart way of comparing it. Think of it the experiences that people have created around the microbreweries. Now you have like craft microbrewery bar crawls where there's tours where you can go and you can visit multiple craft breweries in an afternoon or in a, on a weekend. And it's like an experience. It's a trip. It's something to do with your friends. And I think that's something that we might start to see with micro businesses. If we can get a couple of micro businesses in various municipalities, but in a kind of a congregated location, a congregated area we're probably gonna start seeing tourists like you know the Traverse City uh, wine experience or something like that so that's something that it can definitely be uh, an evolution of this industry as we start to mature right kind of like uh, Napa Valley right, <laughs> right Napa, absolutely. Somewhere in Napa Valley in Michigan there's gonna be there could be it's possible right. for for a lot of micro businesses to be able to exist in, in a small space or in a small city or just uh, in a region uh, of the state. So that's definitely something to look forward to uh, as, as to how that develops. Uh, we get a lot of questions about this. We get a lot of calls about it. That's one reason why we're uh, doing the show right now. Uh, remember uh, that if, if somebody misses this or if you're not able to watch the whole thing, you can go see it again on Facebook and also on our, uh, on our YouTube page. I think one of the number one um, questions that we get is with, with respect to cost. Like how much are these licenses going to cost? What's the minimum capitalization requirements? Uh, what is necessary in order to get in? Um, so first, I, I want to comment and start like this. Again, we don't know precisely what these numbers are going to be, but what we do know is, is this, is that our regulations, as, it, as they exist for medical marijuana licenses now, they seem to prefer and provide uh, for better uh, costs or more reasonable costs for smaller operations. For instance, a Class A uh, grow operation. The minimum capitalization requirement is is what for that? One hundred and fifty, one hundred fifty thousand. Compared to three hundred thousand or five hundred thousand for the other licenses, uh, that's that's a much smaller amount. You got an idea of what you think that a, a minimum capitalization requirement for a, a micro business might be? Do you I, think there will be one? I, I do think there will be one. I think the state wants to make sure that there's funds available to these businesses if they should run into trouble, if they should need access to liquid funds or to funds generally, if they hit a wall or they have some problems. They want to make sure that there's some sort of capital there to support this business. So I do think that there's still going to be a capitalization requirement. That being said, I would lean towards 150000 being... Uh, at least the baseline, but I would I would expect something about 150. Yeah, maybe 200,000. Right. I totally agree. I think that there will be a minimum capitalization requirement for a micro business licensee. Uh, it just makes sense. I think that uh, in order to ensure uh, the ability to be able to sustain and survive uh, over longer business cycles, it's important to to have a little bit of uh, capitalization. And to be quite frank and honest, 150, 200 thousand dollars does not uh, is not is not excessive in my, in my opinion, my humble opinion. Uh, and also we got to remember that those numbers are probably going to be subject to a percentage of, of being liquid. So we're not talking about having $200,000 in the bank liquid. We're potentially, or probably even talking about 25% of that. So 
perhaps like fifty thousand dollars in the bank uh, being liquid. That's uh, that's not an unreasonable amount, especially for a company that can, like I said, like we said, could do great things and have like really, really good opportunity. Have we discussed exactly what? A micro business is. We've talked about what a micro business is, but I don't think we've really touched on who this is ideal for and why. So I mentioned briefly that we're seeing a lot of chatter about the micro businesses from caregivers who are looking to get into the commercial market and for smaller uh, business opportunities. But the reason why I'm so focused on it being small is because there is a significant limitation with this license, and it's that. Right now, if you have a micro business, you can't have an interest in any other marijuana establishment. So you can't have medical or recreational, right? medical, recreational, both. You can't have any interest in any other marijuana company as an investor, as an owner. So you're one and done, which means that the other bigger players that are coming in, they can't come in and start to snatch up your micro business licenses and try to edge you out of the market. So you are protected in that way. But that's why I'm saying that it is kind of a, a meant to preserve the small business model in the state. And hopefully in around, I think it's 2023, the state does have the ability to expand that number where maybe they'll start allowing you to have two micro businesses or up to five. But for right now, until 2023, it's going to be just one. Uh, I think it's also important to note that the only people that will be able to get a license or qualify for a license for at least two years will be Michigan residents. Mm -hmm. Again, another nod to ensuring that our Michigan residents have are not going to be able to get squeezed out because a lot of people are worried about that. So uh, one of the questions that we have is, well, is it only Michigan residents that are able to get a license or is it necessary for just one Michigan resident to be a part of a group of investors uh, that would control or own a license? And I believe, again, we don't know for certain, but I'd say I'm quite certain or quite uh quite certain, pretty certain that it will be permissible to have only one Michigan resident in that ownership circle while others can be residents from other places because that simply just makes sense. And that is what was necessary at the time that a Michigan resident was necessary for a medical uh, uh, license where there was a short period of time that was the case mm -hmm. where it was only it was only one, right? So uh, I think that um, and that's and that's important right? because I think that a Michigan resident wanting to get in to get into it may not have all of the capital necessary to be able to uh, even satisfy the minimum capitalization requirement or the, a lot of the other requirements. I mean, to be frank, to be frank, 150 plants up to 150 plants is not a small amount of plants, right? That is a, an amount of plants that uh, does cost uh, a good deal of money to be able to provide the the equipment and the and the and the uh, capital necessary to be able to uh, grow that number of plants, uh, the, the, to employ the number of people that is necessary. And then we're, we're also have to remember the processing of the, the plants, abstraction of the cannabinoids, the creation of the, all, all the other like, uh, concentrated products or food edible products, and then having a storefront in addition to that. So that's a, that's a, big, that's a big business. That's an operation. That's, uh, that's definitely probably more people than I have working here. <laughs> Uh, uh, so, uh, let's see. So, what else we talk about? Cost. Well, before we get into that, we, well, while we're still talking about limitations, uh, I also want to mention that I think another limitation on this is even though you're vertically integrated, you're still probably going to have to get your product tested. I think that just because you're able to grow, process, and sell all in-house does not get you out of the ability to just sell product to the you know the general public without having it tested. Wouldn't you agree? The Marijuana Regulation and Taxation uh, uh, Act, Michigan Marijuana Regulation and Taxation <laughs> Marijuana Act will require testing, and that's that's important, right? That's necessary uh, for the industry, and it's necessary for. Uh, safe medicine, safe products, safe uh, uh, products for adult use or, or medical. Uh, it's one of the hallmarks of a, a regulated system. It's something that uh, I think that is, is critical to, to, the, to the system. Individ people or consumers want to ensure that the medicine that they are they're getting is safe. Now, 
it's a whole other discussion as to uh, as to try to figure out whether the actual regulations that we have now create safe medicine. Some people think that it's a little overkill and that the regulations are a little bit stiff. That's not necessarily my position to to be critical of that, but. Testing certainly should uh, not have residual solvents. Our, our cannabis shouldn't have pesticides and, 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 and heavy metals and, and, yeah, and, and microbiological <laughs> contaminants. And so that, that testing requirement will be a necessity for, uh, for our micro businesses. And, and the rule, as the rules as they sit now, the testing facility, the safety compliance facility, will go out to the micro business and, and at least at the harvest stage, uh, take samples back to the lab and test them. And then likely again after the processing stage. And then uh, again at, at the retail stage, uh, there may be some random testing as well. I think that the state probably is going to implement a system like that too. So there will be frequent testing to ensure at all stages of, of the cycle uh, or the industry that uh, the, the marijuana that's being distributed to our, uh, to our consumers is, uh, is safe. Absolutely. So getting back to your earlier question about cost, uh, I do think that there is going to, well, I know that there's going to be an application fee to submit it to the state. Uh, that being said, I do expect that application fee to be uniform across all of the license types. So it probably won't matter if you're applying for a micro business versus a class C grow. Um, I expect that that application fee is going to be the same. And I also expect there to be some form of a regulatory assessment fee probably each year to re-up your license. Uh, I do think that you're probably going to have to pay some form of regulatory assessment fee and it'll probably be less than what we would see for a, a Class C grow. Um, I would expect it to be uh, substantially less actually, wouldn't you agree? Uh, class A grow right now for a medical uh, a grower's license, the regulatory assessment is capped at $10,000. So it makes no sense other than to believe that that same thing is going to happen. May not may, may not be ten thousand dollars. Very well, maybe less, uh, and maybe more. Uh, we don't know, but it's certainly going to be, I think, a reasonable amount. Uh, and again, it's just an, another nod to ensure that small businesses have the ability, a financial ability, to enter into the market. You know, I just thought of something else we didn't talk about that much, which is that the. Uh, the Regulation Taxation of Marijuana Act also necessitates that uh, it creates rules and regulations to ensure minorities and those that have been disproportionately affected um, to, to enter into the market. Microbusinesses might be uh, a specific way to accomplish those objectives uh, because of the fact that uh, these, are, these are things that haven't been implemented to success all over the country. In fact, I think most uh, most regulatory and statutory schemes do require some type of uh, uh, restorative justice uh, or um, uh, whatever, they, whatever you want to call it, uh, social equity programs uh, that do ensure that try to seek uh, the, the, that, that minorities and others that have been disproportionately affected, that they have the ability to enter the market. But how is that exactly going to happen when, uh, as it is right now, without a micro business, the costs are still the same. The significant amount of capital uh, expenditure is, is still the same. Uh, if minorities don't have that those opportunities, then, then how are they going to get in anyway? Even if they're given a preference to get a license or some type of priority, if they can't afford it, then it's really meaningless anyway. So I think that uh, the micro business is an opportunity to provide for entrance into the market for uh, for, uh, for my minorities, for, for geographic areas that have been disproportionately affected. Uh, I think it's a, it's a great, great, uh, it's for, for that reason as well, great opportunity. So one of the biggest questions that I know we've been fielding lately is, can I apply yet? Uh, is the application available? Like, what is this going to look like? When am I going to be able to get this license? They are excited. They are stoked about the idea of having a micro business. And they want to know, right I'm so excited <laughs> about this. Um, so they want to know, like, when can we really hit the ground running? And as we mentioned earlier, the application is not out yet. It has not been created. It's not released to the public. I probably wouldn't anticipate seeing a draft of that until later in the fall, probably. Uh, the state should be accepting applications by December 6th of this year. So 
Hopefully, shortly before that, we should have an application that we can get and start to work through for our clients, for you guys at home that might be trying to do it on your own. Uh, but we are uh, pretty certain that the state will start accepting those applications on December 6th. And then the really nice thing about this new law is that it requires the state to take your application, review it, send a, uh, a copy of it to the local municipality, get approval or make sure that the municipality is willing to uh, let you in, and then get all that information back and decide whether to approve or deny your license. And this has to all be done within 90 days. So right now, under the medical law, we have to wait about, what did you say, like maybe eight months to a year um, to get everything in reviewed before the board and it's really time intensive, but under this new model, we don't have a board. We don't have a, as long of a wait. We have 90 days, and that is extremely quick. Uh, so I think that we're probably going to see a couple of changes maybe to the application process. Maybe they won't require quite as much background information. Like, you know, right now they require 36 months of your bank statements and financial statements, and they're going to review line by line everything in them. Maybe they're not going to do that level of review, or maybe they're not going to require submission of all of those documents because they are on a tight timeline. So I'm anticipating a couple of minor changes to the application just to facilitate this really quick turnaround. I think it's uh, very reasonable to believe that there may be major changes just because of the reason that we have uh, a new administration, a new executive administration that looks favorably upon the industry. Uh, our new governor, our new attorney general, they want this stuff to get done as soon as possible. And they're putting people in place right now to ensure that this gets rolled out properly as, quick, as quickly as possible and that it develops. Uh, you know, think about what, if this were, had come out during uh, Snyder's administration, it probably would have been a lot different expectations. We have good expectations now. And, and I think that uh, what, what you pointed out, with 90, only 90 days to be able to do everything necessary to review this application uh, and, and decide, uh, that really is going to force a streamlined process. Uh, and that's something that is, this is gonna be good. Uh, they can do it within 90 days. I'd like to think, I mean, it's easy for me to say that they can do it in 90 <laughs> days. They're gonna have to do it in right. 90 days. Right. Uh, and you know what? I, from what I've, what I've experienced personally thus far, uh, the Department of Licensing and Regulatory Affairs has, in my opinion, been uh, very good. I, I think that they have done their best with the resources that they've had uh, in the medical program. And think about it, when when this does come up in December of, uh, of 2019, they're gonna have a lot of experience in dealing with the medical program and with uh, processing applications. And they're going to be streamlining this application uh, in order to ensure that they have the ability to get through it within uh, 90 days. I think it's also important to note that the medical program and those applications became available shortly before the year time period that they um, that they were given. Uh, they, they were given 12 months. I remember um, we were doing a seminar, and it was like three weeks before it, uh, those applications began to be accepted. So this must have been early December of 2017, and they had them. We had them that day of our seminar. We were able to go through it and look and look through it at our seminar. That the actual application before it actually became accepted, and so that was with no prior experience at all. And they had that application, which has changed since then, but very little. I mean, very little of it has changed. Maybe like the criminal disclosures have changed a little bit, and and the financial disclosures a little bit, but uh, majority of it is the same. So what I mean, what I'm saying is is that the department, the same department that's going to be responsible for providing our uh, our adult use applications, they're the ones that that did it for medical. They did it within 12 months, uh, and they did a pretty good job. And, and they're going to have the ability to revise it, streamline it a little bit, understand their obligations to ensure that it gets out within 90 days. Uh, and I feel confident uh, that they're going to do it. And to be honest with you, they can do it earlier. Uh, it says, the, the statute says, or the, yeah, the statute says that it has to be done no later than uh, December 15th of 2019. That doesn't mean that they can't do it earlier. I guess that'll just remain to be seen. Absolutely. So if you're really excited about this, like I am, then you might be thinking to yourself, what can I do now to get 
on board for this. So what do I have to do now in order to set myself up for having a successful application, to set myself up for having a micro business in early 2020? And it's definitely a good time to get started with lobbying municipalities. Uh, if your municipality or you're hearing chatter about a, a local town meeting or a city council meeting talking about you know opting into or creating an ordinance for medical marijuana establishments and you're really excited about a micro business then we need to start lobbying that municipality to you know allow for that sort of business and you'll have to explain to them the benefits of allowing small businesses local communities love having small businesses and supporting them it's going to bring in money it's going to bring in jobs it's going to be possibly the most secure facility in their their area if it's a smaller uh, city so you know you need to start thinking about how are we going to sell these local officials on this concept of a micro business uh, how else would you go about one uh, way to sell it is that unlike the all the other licenses except for retail only the retail license and the micro business license will entitle a municipality to share in the 10 percent excise tax revenue that the state is going to receive no other licenses other than retail or provisioning centers uh, or or the micro business license uh, you know that, that was written into the law in order to promote them right so we have to utilize that that issue of promotion and be able to explain to, to our municipal officials about uh, why that's going to be significant and and again I think that municipal officials especially in some types of cities cities perhaps like you know Traverse City you know or or other cities perhaps up north or even ones around here uh, having this type of license type is unique right mm -hmm. it's and, and it's also more secure you know I was telling I was talking to a city uh, attorney recently and he told me that his city officials believe, his city council members believe that it is gonna be better to have uh, all license types within one facility, okay? Uh, and I believe, from what, from what I read, I think this is not something that we discussed yet, I believe that it's designed to do that. A micro business is designed to have all three license types, meaning cultivation, processing, and retail in one facility. Uh, and I believe that's gonna be the case, and I believe that is what's most secure. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't uh, allow for cannabis to be transferred outside of the facility. It just stays right there. Mm -hmm. it's, it's easily tracked. Um, and I think it's preferable. Uh, I think cities will find it to be more preferable. They can zone it in a fashion that they uh, think is, is, uh, is appropriate for their municipality. Uh, I, don't, I do not think that it is uh, necess necessary to zone these places in industrial zones or agricultural zones like it is so as growers under the medical marijuana act it has to be a an industrial zone or a, or a uh, uh, agricultural zone or unzoned uh, uh, um, municipalities can be uh, a little bit more um, creative as to where they put them or they can be very selective about where they put them uh, and and it's just a great uh, it's a great alternative to because every city is different I can tell you that right now one thing that I've learned in doing this job Every city is completely different. Some have a lot of agricultural uh, areas. Others have little or none. Some have a lot of industrial zones. Some have downtowns. There's so many cities I didn't realize don't have a downtown. You know, like like the topography and the and the geographical uh, boundaries. They're they're just they're just different. Every city is different. We have 1,700 of them uh, in the state, and and there's something in it for everybody. I think you know what. And some of them may not like any of them at all, and that's fine. But I think that over time we're gonna we're gonna find that cities start to change their attitudes, their social attitudes when it when it comes to marijuana and cannabis. That's what we're seeing uh, in other states. That's definitely gonna happen here, um, but we'll take it as, as it comes, right? Absolutely. I also think that uh, something else that you can start on now, and I just want to quickly address two because this leads into two comments that I saw our friend Brad had made uh, throughout the the live viewing. Uh, hi, Brad. Hi, Brad. Uh, he asked if it's sustainable for micro businesses to uh, exist long term because they only have 150 plants. And he also mentioned, I believe, that uh, municipalities are going to want to see some form of a business plan before they really feel comfortable uh, with. This 
this model. And I think that that's an excellent point uh, because while you're ramping up to submit an application, this is an excellent time to start thinking about what is my business model going to look like? How Absolutely. am I going to save money? How am I going to make this sustainable in the long term? How am I going to make a profit? Uh, and if you can kind of identify what your you know initial ramp up costs are going to look like, how much money you're going to need for electricity, you know maybe vetting different security companies to help figure out your pricing for security. I have phone calls right now all the time from prospective clients asking me how much is it really going to start or cost to start this operation, and I'll tell them it depends on the scale and who you want to go through, who you want to want contract with, and so right now when you've got a couple of months to kind of figure out these specifics and you can create a really nice detailed business plan on how are you going to you know grow 150 plants process that how many employees are you going to need for that what's your what's your utilities going to look like and making sure that those numbers make sense not only for your business in the long term but also for the municipality how are you going to make a profit but then also make sure that maybe you're donating something to one of the local community organizations because these municipalities love to see that uh, how are we going to make this sustainable in the long term make that business plan take some time to put some really really good thought into it and the stronger you can make that before you file your application the better that application package is going to look i can tell you that, that you're, you're absolutely right and i would love the opportunity to talk to municipal officials about the potential of a micro business opportunity in their municipality especially with a well thought out plan with a good property i think that people undervalue a good property especially one that potentially may need some redevelop redevelopment or that has it that's been vacant for a long time something that the city kind of wants to be redeveloped may even uh, spur some redevelopment in the area uh, and then with a good team uh, these are things that are very that can be very influential uh, to municipal officials in addition to the tax revenue uh, so I, I, I would love that opportunity because I think that there, there really is. And, and honestly, I think that there, there are a lot of people, a lot of city officials would be more interested in this than, than other types of facilities. You know, they can limit it to, um, to even residents of their, of their city or not limit it perhaps, but like give preference, preference. To, to residents of the city. The city people that have been there a long time, perhaps potentially like operated businesses there have been successful, known well to the city. To be able to do something like this, uh, I think that uh, it's just, to me, it seems like a really attractive uh, thing to do. So I, I, I'm super excited about it. I'm not kidding. You know, I think that, that's, that this is like so important to the, to the industry. I'm pretty sure, did they, did they try to eliminate micro businesses when they tried to amend the they regulation did. tax? They well, did. It's like, and it's like getting, trying to get, getting rid of home growth. That, <laughs> that is, I mean, we were all, like, we all kind of knew that that was going to be a difficult thing to do, but... I know, like the people like me were like still just like on our like the edge of our seats, hoping that 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 never came like even come close to like being even voted on, let alone passed. And so, thankfully, we got over that. That's a whole other issue we could talk about. So I guess we'll wrap it up today. Anything else you want to discuss before? I think we covered everything. I think it's going to be an experience. And start planning now. Talk to your municipal officials. Uh, make that connection. Make sure you establish yourself as their guy or their team that they want to have you in your community and you're setting yourself up for a really successful micro business. All right. Well, thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget to uh, share this episode or any other episode with others that you might think that would be interested in it. Don't uh, hesitate to continue to contact us with questions about this particular topic or any other, or if you think that there's something that would be good for uh, us to, to dive into on a, on a show. We're going to do this every Friday. We're here every Friday. Uh, I appreciate that you might be looking for Nick or Travis this time, but that didn't happen. You got, <laughs> you got Bart and, and Jennifer, and so, uh, we're, we're, but we're happy to do it, you know? And so uh, maybe those guys will be here next time. Sounds All good. All right, so uh, thanks for, for watching, and we'll uh, see you next time.